What up everybody? I, uh, I'm here today to show you how to find the value of an unknown capacitor in a circuit. So I've got a pretty simple circuit here. Um, I'm feeding a 50 hertz square wave into um, a resistor and a capacitor and I'm probing it with an oscilloscope between the resistor and capacitor and we're going to figure out what that value is. So when you do this you should see something like this on your oscilloscope. Um, something like this. Okay, This top one is the 50 hertz square wave. That's what it would look like and then this is what the charging and discharging would look like on that capacitor. You can see that when the uh, square wave goes high the capacitor starts to charge. When the square wave goes low you can see it discharges. Okay, And so today we're going to be looking at just uh, a charging cycle of the capacitor and we're going to figure out what the value of it is. So let me show you what my oscilloscope looks like and then we'll go from there. Alright, so this is what I've got on my oscilloscope. You can see that I haven't zoomed in on just one, but uh, at least two. So you just try to get as close as you can to seeing the whole wave. But you can see this nice wave, this nice exponentially increasing and then decreasing. Okay, and uh, this is my setup. I've got the oscilloscope, I've got the circuit, and I actually have the oscilloscope connected to the function generator with this connector so I can actually overlap the signal of the function generator on top of that uh, signal from the capacitor and you can see that when it, when the signal goes into the capacitor it charges and then when it drops down to zero it discharges. Okay, kind of cool to see those two overlapping and pretty cool to be able to see what uh, what this circuit's doing. And so let's do some math to figure out what the uh, capacitance is of this capacitor. Okay, so we're going to be using uh, this equation for this problem. You can also use this equation um, if the capacitor is discharging, but since we're working with a part of the wave that is increasing or charging, we're going to be using this equation. And so we're, what we're going to do, let me walk you through these variables. Um, v sub c is the voltage of the capacitor uh, depending on where it is at time. So it is um, the voltage of the capacitor. Uh, v sub 0 is the max voltage, um, the voltage that I'm getting from my function generator is 5.12 volts. So that's that voltage. Now uh, this is 1 minus E to the negative T over tau. Tau is the same thing as R times C or resistance times uh, capacitance. So what we're going to do is we're going to set um, tau equal to RC and what we end up getting sorry what we're going to be doing is we're going to be setting T equal to RC so that we get negative RC over RC which is just negative 1 and this is also equal to uh, V sub 0 of 1 minus 1 over E okay but you can still work with that and so we want to figure out the voltage of the capacitor when it is um, when it's at this this time. So what we'll get is V sub C is equal to our voltage here, one two volts times one minus E to the negative first, and that's equal to. So I 
that's equal to 3.236. Let's just go 3.24 volts. So now that we know this voltage, we're going to come over to here and we want to find, using our oscilloscope, where, how much time it takes the capacitor to charge up to 3.24 volts. And we want to find this time. So let me show you how you do that. Okay, so how we're going to find this is we're going to use, now I have a digital oscilloscope, so I've got some cool uh, tools I can use. I can pull up a cursor, and I can actually select where I want the cursor to be. Now, if you don't have the cursor function or if you're using an analog oscilloscope, you're just going to have to work with the divisions, uh, making sure to know um, how much time per division you've got your oscilloscope set at so that you get the proper number. But since I've got this function, I'm going to use it. And so what I've got here is you can see the voltage here. And I want that to be at 3.24 volts. So it's kind of I've kind of hard to get it there, but okay, 3.2 volts. Now what that's doing is it is taking it's measuring from this other cursor, which is right here. It's measuring that tiny space in between there. Okay, and so what I can look at is over here. You can see that that uh, delta T is 1.4 milliseconds. So we're going to use that in our equation. All right, so it takes the capacitor 1.4 milliseconds to charge to 3.24 volts. And so now what we can do is since we set T equal to RC, we can figure out the capacitance. So how we do this is we're going to rearrange this so we get C on one side. So we divide by C. We get T over C is equal to R. Now we multiply by the reciprocal. We get T. Sorry, not T. We get 1 over C is equal to R over T. Now we take the reciprocal, C is equal to T of R. Okay, there's many different ways you can do that, but that's how I did it. And so C is equal to our time, 1.4 milliseconds, divided by our resistance. Now, if you remember back, our resistance was 10,000 ohms. So I'm just going to do 10,000 ohms. Okay, now you got to make sure here that you have your you have this in seconds and then this is in ohms. So I got to rearrange this. I got to do 1.4 times 10 to the negative 3 seconds. Okay, milliseconds is to the negative third power and then just 10,000 ohms. Okay, now you can also um, put this into this form. I think it would be 10 to the negative uh, two, something like that. Don't quote me on that, but we're going to use it that way. So what we get here, 1.4, I'm going to use e to the negative three divided by 10,000, 1.4 times 10 to the negative seven farads. Okay. That's what the capacitor is at. Now, we want to get that in microfarads, so we're going to need to change it up a bit. So this number right here is 1 farad. Now, a microfarad 
is equal to uh, 10 to the negative 6 farads. Uh, so we want to put it in that form. So we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 0 0.14 times 10 to the negative 6 farads. Um, but we can change that. That is the same thing as 0 0.14 micro farads. And the capacitor rating is a 104 Z, and that is a 0 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitor. Okay. All right. So I hope that helped uh, helped you in some way to understand the math behind figuring out the uh, value of a unknown capacitor. And we'll see you.